And as a precaution to keep everyone safe, we ask that everyone continue to wear a mask, even if you are fully vaccinated. And as you participate in our virtual worship experiences, we ask you to check in to let Pastor know all as well. Please tag a friend, tell a friend, and share your timeline. Write a review, follow, and subscribe to all of our social media sites. For those who are not on social media, you may call into the prayer line to hear the worship experience. Our 21-day corporate fast and consecration at 6 a.m. and will end on Saturday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. Join us in prayer Monday through Friday at 6 a.m. The number is 904-512-0115 and the access code 140-423. An evening corporate prayer will be held in person at the church from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. and virtually via our social media sites. You may pick up a fasting guide after the worship experience. You can also receive it via email. Just contact Karina or Tynetta for your guide. In the first class for our 2022 School of Ministry, Students of the Word class will be this Wednesday at 7 p.m. at the church, followed by the Ministers of the Word class at 8 p.m. Come out to learn how to study the Bible or what it takes to be a minister of the gospel. We will have our on-campus closed giveaway this Saturday from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. Join us as we connect our church to the community. Session 2 of our January New Members Connection class will be next Sunday at 8.30 a.m. We are grateful to all who are committed to being a systematic giver of your tithe and offering. You can give via push pay by texting TILJAX to 77977 via the Truth and Love app and on our website at truthandlove.tv. You may also drop off your giving envelopes Tuesday through Friday between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. and on Sundays between 9 and 12.30. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Ask your family members, friends, co-workers, and neighbors to become a subscriber and to hear a fresh, relevant, and clear word from God. TIL, have you downloaded our new Truth and Love app? If not, go to the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and search for Truth and Love Ministries. You may either have to update or download the app. The app as well as our website is our central hub for all things truth and love. Get apt in. Here comes the church. Hey, we, are the we are so excited about the word that is going to be delivered today. Oh yeah, we're so excited. Awesome last week. Man, it oh, was yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so oh, yeah. excited. <laughs> we're all yeah. excited. And we know that worshiping from home is difficult, but we have some tools to help you. And listen, if this is your first time viewing, I want you to text the letters FTV mm -hmm. to the number 904-245-1089 and somebody will be here with you and make sure you stay connected with us. And speaking of staying connected, all our viewers, here's your chance to join our team. We know how important it is to spread the gospel to everybody. So we want you to share this video on Facebook, mm -hmm. Instagram, mm -hmm. and Twitter. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching from YouTube, hit that share button under that live video and send it to someone in your text messages. Speaking of staying connected as well, man, we even created a brand new website. It's www.truthandlove.tv. You can log on today and learn all things about truth and love. Now, speaking of watching the video, right? When we're sitting at home and we're watching with you guys, hearts are the new hallelujah. Mm. Definitely when the praise and worship is going on, since they are ablaze, <laughs> make sure you light the screen up with the fire emoji. Y'all know how Pastor does, Yay. right? <laughs> <laughs> we miss you guys so very much. We miss seeing each of you on Sundays and Thursdays, mm. and we just miss all your hugs. Hey, y'all, what it's time to do? Jump, Jump into, into the, the worship, worship experience. experience. What's going on, Truth in Love Nation? Thank you for joining us for another edition of Through the Word Thursday. 
Maybe from time to time you find yourself asking the question, why is it that pastor is always asking us to share, always asking us to start a watch party? I know y'all be talking about me, but that's okay. <laughs> Listen, let me give you a little bit of social media education, if you don't mind. Currently, at the time of this recording, on Facebook, we have about 3,000 people that have liked our Truth and Love Ministries page. While that's all fine and dandy, uh, the way that Facebook is set up, only about 2% of those people actually see when it is that we post. And so now I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I am in the drawer. That tells me that only about 60 people see what it is that we post. So you're the smart class. So I know that you're asking yourself, well, how do they see it? So glad you asked. Number one, we can pay for it. When we pay for it, Facebook will say, I'll show it to whoever you want to show it to. Then number two is when you text it. It's when you share it on your timeline. It's when you repost it, when you love it, when you start a watch party. That is how persons are able to see when we're pushing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ forward. So you do know that we exist to connect people to God. So when you do all those things on Facebook, that is our evangelistic effort. Do you mind if I get in your business for a minute? Are you a top fan? Are you at least a sharer as you see it posted here? Are you a top fan or a sharer? If you're not, then that tells me that you have not been interacting with us. Shame on you. Oh, oh, YouTubers, you think you're going to get off the hook. No, I see y'all over there. I hear you saying, I don't do all that Facebook stuff, but no, I'm on YouTube. All right, that's fine. I got something for you as well, YouTubers, because when you're in the live chat on YouTube, you just press that X button as you see it pictured here, and then you go and press the like button on the video. Very important to press the like button button and then you can press share right there underneath the video then you press the word copy come on follow me you can do it come on you press copy and then go over to your text messages and paste it into your text messages and send it to everybody in your phone let me give it to you one more time exit out of the live chat and then press like like the video come on every time you like it that's YouTube say oh y'all like that let me show more people these types of videos since y'all like that you like the video then press copy then when you press copy you go to your text messages press your text message and paste the link in your text message and send it to everybody in your phone all right so now whether you're on Facebook you know what to do if you're on YouTube you know what to do if you're on Twitter, retweet it. If you're watching with us on our website, you can do the same thing. If you're watching us on our app, we thank God for you. Even if you know someone that's not connected to the World Wide Web, you can be able to give them our prayer line number, and they can call that number on the screen, and they can listen to the worship and the word just like you're viewing it right now. Now, come on. Do you know this is through the word Thursday, so I need you to send that email to those young ladies because I know that you're on tiptoeing anticipation and you're ready to fill in the blank so send that to them and they'll send that email to you right to your inbox and the blessed part about it is when you do it one time they send it to you every Thursday or you can go right to our website www.truthandlove.tv and as soon as you go on the web page it's right there you just click on it and it's downloaded right there to your computer all right I know there's a lot of instructions but I got one more thing for you I need you to go back to the chat whether you're on Facebook or YouTube and I need you to type these three letters a i w or if you're feeling froggy just write the whole thing out all is well all is well come on you know that lady c and myself have pastor's heart and we just want to make sure that everything is well with you and your family i know that we're physically distant right now but that doesn't mean we can't be spiritually connected and socially connected so let us know that all is well please believe that we're praying for you every day we're calling out your name on a weekly basis and we're believing God for your continual safety your continual prosperity and your continual healing and all those things that pertain to life and godliness in your life even during this season so I love you I thank God for you I'm well obviously Lady C's well uh, Shari is well Kendall's well uh, 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 Carson is well C4 is well Lord that's a lot of kids all of us are well we're doing good let us know that you're well all right Grab your Bible. Grab your study notes. Come on, call somebody. Text somebody. Tell them pastors up. Let's get ready to go through the word on our Through the Word Thursdays. God bless you. Here comes the church. Peace out. Welcome to the worship experience. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I among them. 
But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up into all things, which is the head, even Christ. Let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why you are here. Let me tell you why you are here. To get connected to God. To get connected to your God-given purpose. To connect this church to our community. Listen, truth and love will not be church as usual. We will cultivate an atmosphere where the Spirit of the Lord can dwell. And the lost can be reconciled. And the believers can be strengthened and... The body can exhort one another. Here we are committed to pleasing the Lord, to evangelism, to holistic living, to youth empowerment, to discovery purpose, to excellence, to humility and love. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome to the worship experience. Welcome, Welcome to, to the truth, truth and, and love. love. Shown. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole. One more time, I'm reaping. I'm reaping the harvest God promised me. Take back what the devil stole from me. And I, re and I rejoice today. For I shall recover it all. Come on, put your hands together. Give them some praise. If you're going to recover it all. <laughs> Come on, give him some praise and some glory and some honor. I'm getting it all back. Come on, y'all to decree that and declare that. I'm getting it all back. I'm getting it all back. Everything that God desires for me to have, I'm getting it all back. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him some praise, some glory, and some honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because we agree with the words of that song. That, God, truly, we are reaping the harvest that you promised us. And we're going to take back everything that the enemy has stolen from us. Uh, we thank you uh, for allowing us the opportunity, God, to be able to have and to be able to, uh, be able to obtain and to be able to maintain everything that you've given us. Uh, that's what Jabez said. Jabez prayed a prayer and said, Lord, enlarge my territory and bless me indeed. And he said, after you enlarge it, after you bless me, he said, give me what it is that I need to be able to hang on to it. And God, we thank you that that's what it is that you're going to be doing in this brand new year. Thank you for a brand new year. Thank you for a brand new opportunity. Thank you, God, for us being able to come together to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. To be able to lift you up because you're the King of Kings and the glory and the Lord of Lords. We thank you for this very first Thursday of a brand new year. We're so appreciative. We're so excited. We haven't been here all year long <laughs> on a Thursday, and we're so appreciative for it. Uh, thank you for us being able to gather together to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, as we uh, endeavor to dive into your word. We ask you, God, just simply to have your way, ready our hearts and ready our minds. We ask you to do this every time we approach your word because we want everything that you desire to say to us. We want you to download it in our spirit. We ask you to rid us of every hindrance and every distraction, any and everything that looks to stop or to block your word, your gospel from having a free cause. We pray even that your word will penetrate the very airwaves and God will be able, God, to receive your word wherever we are. We thank you, uh, God, that you love us that kind of way and we bless your name and we thank you in advance in Jesus name somebody say amen amen come on put your hands together give them some praise hallelujah amen you may claim your seat 
May claim your seats in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank God for all of you. Thank God for all of you on, on this uh, Thursday, Thursday in the middle of the day, uh, Thursday worship experience where we uh, gather around the word of the Lord. Thank God for all of our in-person worshipers. Go and give yourselves a hand. Thank God for all of our in-person worshipers. Thank God for you. Thank God for Sister Wise while we're clapping. Amen. Appreciate you, Sister Wise. Amen. Thank God for you in reaping. The harvest God has promised me, and not only Sister Wise, but our multimedia team and everybody that helps us do what we do. Uh, the, the wheels on the bus to make this thing go round and round. I know you got your Bible and your study notes. I'm going to look and see, peep and see who's online really quickly. I see Miss Brookings and I see Miss Nicole. I see who I see, G. Robinson. What's up, G. Robinson? I see Miss Cecilia. Miss Cecilia. I see Bree. All right, she said share. I see Bree. All right, let me see what we got over here on the on the YouTube, Church of YouTube, Brother Dula Green. And I see Kang Yong Yong, Kang Yong Yong. I don't know who that is on there. Kang Yong Yong. Is it Kang Yong Yong on there? I don't know. I don't know who that is, but thank you for watching, Kang Yong Yong. Who that is? Amen. Amen. We appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody and everybody else over here over here on the YouTube come on and share this with somebody I believe that God has something that he desires to say to us on this very very first Thursday of a brand new year I'm excited about 2022 anybody else excited about 2022 amen not just because we turned the calendar but because I know that God desires um, to do something fresh in our lives as he always does come on grab your Bible grab your Bible we're going to St. John we're going to St. John chapter, chapter 5, St. John chapter 5, and we're going to look at one verse of scripture, verse number 6, St. John chapter 5, one verse of scripture, verse number 6, and we're going to read from the Amplified Version. Uh, if you don't have that translation, we just invite you to look with us on the screen. Uh, St. John chapter 5, verse number 6, Amplified, Jesus, the Bible, the word of the Lord says, when Jesus noticed him lying there helpless knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition. He said to him, do you want to become well? Are you really in earnest about getting well? Amen. Come on, let's say amen to the reading of God's word. Amen, that's right. Uh, today we are kicking off a brand new series on this Thursdays through the word, brand new series. Uh, this is part one of the Fresh Start series. And this today we're going to, we're going to minister, we're going to teach, we're going to preach for this thought in our hearts and in our minds, kick the crutch, kick the crutch, kick, come on somebody say that, kick the crutch, kick the crutch, kick the crutch, kick the crutch. Uh, come on, type that on the screen, all of our Facebookers and all of our YouTubers, come on, send that to somebody, kick the crutch, kick the crutch. As I've alluded to, I think it's so important for those of us as the people of God, it's so important for us to be able to maximize every opportunity that God gives us. I think that uh, oftentimes we mismanage our here and our now. We mismanage what it is that God is desiring to do in our lives right now because we're so trying to deal with what's next. And God does have something for us next, but we cannot mismanage the now looking and longing for the next but I believe as God allows us to embark on a brand new year a brand new everything in 2022 I believe that God desires to give us a fresh start desires to give us a fresh start really and truly we get a fresh start every day we get a fresh start every day it's about it's about us making up in our mind this is why I say this all the time this is why I say that that I, that, uh, that this is the day that the Lord I, gonna, I say this all the time and I don't know what I was going to say so here yeah, this is the day that the Lord has made and we choose to rejoice and I notice that I say that all the time we choose to rejoice and be glad there because it's a choice that we make that we're going to rejoice we got reasons to complain like everybody else we got reasons to talk about this is wrong and that's wrong but we have to make up in our mind that we're going to rejoice so every day and every week and every month and every year we must know that God has given us a fresh start and in this fresh start we cannot take bad habits into a new season or into a fresh start we cannot take bad filthy habits that have kept us bound in the previous season but we must be able to do what we need to do that way we can maximize everything that God desires for us to maximize in fact in a lot of our lives and most of our lives we have to learn how to kick the crutch we gotta learn how to kick the crutch yes we do let me define crutch so we can be all on the same page here crutch is just simply a figure of speech 
that describes something that is used as a surrogate or substitute for a more ideal solution or approach. So it's something that, that's a surrogate. You hear the term a surrogate mother. It's not the child's natural mother. It's not the child's birth mother, but it's somebody who stepped in to be a surrogate mother or a surrogate father. It is not what, it was not what the original design was, but this surrogate or substitute comes in in place of an ideal solution or approach. Uh, and this definition comes from the Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary says the term also implies a degree of habitual laziness. Amen. And here they, I, I know this doesn't apply, especially to our noonday, this doesn't apply to any of us, but this is your cousin's word. So I need you to send this to all of your cousins and your aunties and all of that. Anybody who you know that has a, have a habit of kind of having some habitual laziness. And this is what a crutch is. A crutch is something that hinders us. And oftentimes in our lives, we have things that we hold on to. We have things that we, we hold on as like a, a, a security blanket or something that we hold near and dear to our heart that God has never intended for us to hold on to and it stops us from doing what it is that God has called us to do. And we're going to study this today. We'll see this most appropriately in this John chapter 5. But before we go there, I love when we study John's gospel because John's gospel is much different from the other gospel writers. I keep telling you about the synoptic gospels. That's Matthew, that's Mark, and that's Luke. Synoptic just simply means similar, similar gospels. And here each one of those gospels have their point they have their slant. They have what it is the Holy Spirit laid on those authors' heart to be able to give over to you and I. But when we begin to study God, John's gospel, John's gospel is much different because here it is. He's not trying to prove that, that Mary had a little lamb. He's not trying to prove any of that. But his point, in fact, John gives us the purpose for his gospel at the end of the gospel. Look at John 21, 25, and it's going to bless you. Look what John says. Now there are also many other things that Jesus did. Listen to what John says closely. He says, were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. John says that there's much, much more that Jesus did. There's much, much more that Jesus said. There's much, much more that transpired. And here, this is, this is, this is important for you and I, especially in this information uh, overload society that we have. We have everything at our fingertips, everything at our disposal. We want to know everything. But what John is saying, that if everything was written about what Jesus did, if everything was written about what Jesus uh, said, if everything was written about his life, the entire narrative about his life was written, the libraries of the world or the books of the world could not be able to contain everything that Jesus said and did. So what, what, what's the point? The point is that we got everything that we need. The point is we got enough. We got enough. And so, and so oftentimes you have people, they'll ask me about the lost books. So they'll ask me about all of these extra writings, the apocrypha and all these different things that are historical books nonetheless, but they're not divinely inspired. And my response as always is, is that it's, I got my hands full trying to study the found books, let alone trying to figure out what's going on in the lost books and this and that. There's nothing wrong with looking at some extra biblical uh, uh, literature when it's historical, long as not, as long as it's not something that's diabolically opposed to what it is that we believe. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that John says the point of the scripture and the point of his gospel is not to try to tell us everything about Jesus. And I think we need to get this sometimes because oftentimes we'll say, well, Jesus never said anything about that. Jesus never said anything about that. That's not the point of the gospel. But we have enough of what Jesus said. And enough of what Jesus taught and enough of the miracles and the signs and the wonders to be able to understand the character and the nature of God. And when I understand God's character and nature, when something comes from outside of my understanding of what God has revealed, it's my responsibility to push that out. Because that doesn't go along with what it is that God has shown us. Jesus, if everything he said and done, John said, their libraries would not be able to behold. So John, why did you write this gospel? Look what he says in John chapter 20 verse 30 he said now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the of, of the disciples which were not written in this book again he, he says that Jesus did a lot of things but this this key word in this verse is that word signs somebody say signs signs the, the John, John says he did many of the signs he did many of the signs and this is what this is how John's gospel is laid out 
John literally grabs some sayings of Jesus. He grabs the I am. You know, we have the I am. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the true vine. I am the, I am the way, the truth and life. He said that I, he grabs all these I am's. And John also grabs these miracles. And these miracles are signs. Like you and I have signs on the road that kind of shows us, show us where to go. Let us know how far we are to our destination. The signs that John lift out of the life of Jesus Christ is to be able to point us somewhere it's a purpose it's a reason why John showed us these signs and these miracles and the miracle we're going to study today is going to be the third miracle that John recorded the first miracle that Jesus ever performed was Jesus turning what water in the wine. Y'all a smart class. See, yeah? that, was a, that was a very, very first miracle. The second miracle that John records is Jesus healing this noble man's son. But this third sign or this third miracle, it is for a purpose. And I believe that God is desires for us to study this particular miracle, this particular sign today so we can be able to learn how to kick the crutch. I, I really believe that. I really believe that. So, so, so let's make some declarations in this house today. Let's make some declarations. This year, this is First thing I need to tell you this year, I must be willing to discover and develop and deploy purpose. That, that we, we're making some declarations this year. If I'm going, if I'm going to kick the crutch for real though, and not just make some old empty, vain New Year's resolutions, saying what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk nine miles every day. I'm going to drink ten gallons of water every day. Come on, I'm, a, I'm going to the gym six times a day, and all this stuff we be saying, all this pie in the sky stuff that we be we be promising ourselves, knowing we're not going to do it. We don't even get out of January good, and then we've been and forgot all about what it is that we promised. But this year, can I tell you you that you and I can kick any crutch, anything that, that is hindering us or not allowing us to be who God desires for us to be if we will, if we'll be willing to now notice that, willing to to discover, we got to discover each, each and every last one of us, God has given us purpose, somebody say purpose God has given us purpose. Not, purpose is not just for the preacher. Purpose is not for those that the clergy and all that. No, every last one of us, God has given us a purpose. God has put something down on the inside of us. But the, the, the beautiful part about life is, is that God desires for us to seek after him. And when I seek after him, I'll begin to discover what my purpose is. And when I discover what my purpose is, it's our responsibility to do that second word. We got to learn to do what? To develop my purpose and not just for me to say oh the Lord showed me he wants me to be a blessing to you he wants me to help the kids he wants me to be a blessing and empower you I hear your pastor saying that we're committed to youth empowerment and that's what God's purpose is for my life but now just because you say that and that doesn't mean that you're going to maximize your purpose just because you discover what it is that don't mean that it's just going to automatically happen no you need to start giving yourself over into that particular purpose in that particular vein you got to start honing your skills in that particular area. You got to start bathing yourself over into the things of God to where God can begin to develop in you what, how you're going to maximize that purpose. All, all I'm saying to you is, is that purpose doesn't happen out of a vacuum. You just can't say, Lord, let me know my purpose. All right, I'm in purpose. That, that's not how it works, my friend. But no, when you discover it, here you develop it. And here, this, this is why this is so important because the enemy of our soul, he doesn't want us to be in purpose. So he does all that he can to veil my purpose. He wants to hide it from me so I can't discover it. He wants me to spend all my life. When we, when we studied the, the, the eight habits of a highly effective believer, I told you about Stephen Covey said that it's a, it's a real sad thing for us to be, be climbing the ladder and going one particular place all our life, climbing this ladder, trying to get to this destination, trying to get to this point, all only to find out that our ladder been leaning on the wrong wall. <laughs> can, can, I tell, can I tell you that? That's just what the enemy desires to do. He wants us to lean our ladder on the wrong wall so we'll never discover our purpose. We'll never develop our purpose. And then here's the beauty of it. This is what it's all about. It's to be able to deploy our purpose. What is deploy? It means to put it into practice. It means to be able to actually do what it is that God has called you to do. I don't know about you. Maybe I'm by myself. But I'm making a bold declaration that this year I'm going to be willing to discover God's purpose concerning me, develop God's purposes 
concerning me and deploy God's purposes concerning me. And this is what John is saying about this particular gospel. But this particular gospel is written. It was written for a purpose. It was written for a purpose. Can I tell you that little is ever accomplished. Little, if not anything, is ever accomplished in life without a firm purpose. If you don't have a firm purpose, there's not much that you're going to be able to accomplish. You can wish all you want to. You can come from good stock all you want to. You can be pretty. Your good looks only going to go and get you so far. Ask me how I am. I can't tell you. Here is, it's only so far that things are going to get you. Here, you got, you got to be able to be. Well, I don't know. Why, why was that so funny? Can I, can I tell you here? There's some things that we only going to come to pass when you and I have firm purpose. Einstein would have never been able to discover relativity if if he, if that theory, that thought, if he had not been committed to a firm purpose, the, U, the United States, as we know, would never went to the moon if they would not have been con committed to the purpose of doing that. And can I tell you, we can name stuff on and on and on, but in a real sense, can I tell you that many of us, as children of God, we will not be able to kick any crutches if we are not firmly committed to and being determined to the purpose that God has given us. What, what you trying to say, bro, Pastor? I'm trying to say this to you. Look at John chapter 20, verse 31. Here, this is why John said the, the reason. He, he said, this is, a re this is a purpose why I wrote this gospel. John 20 and 31. It says, but these things were written. Why did you write it, John? The answer is right here. So that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, okay? Not only that, the Son of God. Not only that, here it is. Here's the purpose. And that by believing you may have life in his name. That's good. That's good to me. When I, when I read that, I, you know, I just read that just for the background of, of the gospel of John because the background is the background. But then when I read that, I said, oh, that's a, that's a good point right there. John said, I'm writing this gospel for a purpose, not just for us to believe that Jesus is Christ, not just for us to believe that he's the son of God. But John said, thirdly, by believing, I might have life in his name. Can I tell you that that's what so many people are longing for and looking for in our world they're looking to live their best life they're looking to be able to get to a place where I can be able to level up to a particular platform I'm trying to get to a particular tax bracket I'm trying to be able to get to a particular relationship status and here we're trying to pursue all of these things and John says the purpose of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is that you and I might have life in him Lord have mercy I don't think y'all know how good that is what am I trying to tell you I'm trying to tell you that God just don't want us to have a mundane life God just don't want us to have routine life and can I tell you you can be existing and not have God you can be coughing and breathing and sneezing preferably not in here you won't be doing any of that but here can I tell you you can be doing in all of that and you're just merely just existing but the kind of life that God desires for us to have is that abundant life yes sir I'm, I don't need to just be doing mundane name going through the motion going gotta make the donuts gotta make the donuts today you're just going through the motion you're just a hamster wheel you're just going on the, on the little maid that's mundane that's life without God but the kind of life that God reveals to us through his word the kind of life that God reveals to us through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is this kind of life look at look at what it means right like life is the condition of living or look at this the state of being alive hmm. You, you can be existing and not be alive. Amen. Look at this. Especially healthiness, yes. happiness, exuberance, energy, vitality, and, and, and the light. In other words, this is, this is the God kind of life. This is the life that God desires for us. This is why I say, I got, that's why I say this year, I got to be willing to discover and develop and deploy my purpose. Because I can't live like that if, I, if, I, if I'm not committed to the life that God has given me. What, what am I saying? In this society that we're living in, everyone is so bent towards getting to a place to where it's about fulfilling us and fulfilling what we want to do. But God tells us it's not about me fulfilling what it is that I desire to do. You can have the, the sexiest person that you desire, as much money as you desire, but that will not be able to bring you this type of life. And here I can, I can scramble all my life thinking it's going to be my education, thinking it's going to be in this or in that, but God says whenever it is that I'm committed to him and I'm serving him, then I'll be able to have this abundant, this abundant life. Oh my God.
God. Can I tell you, so, so many people want to know, what's their purpose? What's my purpose in life? What's my purpose? What's my purpose? I don't know my purpose. Let me help you kind of start scooting towards your purpose. Let me help you start kind of scooting towards what it is that I know that God desires all of us to walk in. Let me, let me tell you what it is. Come on, write it down if you desire. It's not on the screen. Just, 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 just listen to me. Because here, can I say that, that, that purpose is really finding usefulness. <laughs> Ask God... How can you be useful and start doing that? <laughs> mm, see, see, that ain't sexy enough. That's not, ain't nobody gonna know. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna know I'm being useful. You know, we, ain't nobody, I ain't gonna get no, I ain't gonna get no, no, I'm not gonna get no, 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 no publicity being useful. But no, but can I tell you, be, being, fi find out how you can be useful. This, this is how, this is how I'm standing on this platform today. I'm standing on this platform today, not because I went to preaching school and went to pastor school, but I'm standing on this, on this platform today because I gave myself over to usefulness. I gave myself, how can I help? How can I assist? Whether it be my pastor, whether it be me going to the prisons and the jails or going standing outside and when Dixie and inviting people to come to church and, and witnessing and praying with people and loving on people, I gave myself over to being useful. And whenever it is I found, that's what the Bible says, whatever you find your hand to do, he said, do it with all of your might. So when I find myself being useful, I mess around and discover some purpose. I mess around and get to a place where I'm right what God desires for me to do but because the tr a trick of the enemy is because you're not concrete on what it is you're supposed to be doing because you're not concrete on the way you're supposed to go you're just going to sit here and you're just going to wait oh but the devil is alive wish the four lepers are here because they say why in the world we just going to sit here until until we die somebody say get busy get busy get busy I got to get busy John 10 10 I thought that was going to go over a whole lot better than it did I thought y'all was going to be flipping over chairs and stuff I said I'm not going to be able to turn the page over by the time we because that was going gonna be so good that's my best part right there I can really be a dick right there because that's my that's my favorite part right there John 10 10 said the thief comes it only goes down here from there the, the thief comes only to steal to kill and destroy but what Jesus came Jesus said I came that, that I that, that they may have life and have it how more abundant more abundantly this is what this is what this is a life that God desires for us to have an abundant life an abundant life John 5 26 says for as the father has life in himself look at this so he has granted the son also to have life in himself so, so oftentimes, man, this, this is this is this is so anti anti culture because we we think we think we think doing the things of God or doing the work of God is blocking me from having my life. We, we think we think being 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 bathed, bathing myself over the things of God hinders me or stops me from doing what it is that I desire to do. But here, literally, I'm only going to be able to discover what God desires for me to do is when I abide in him. And that's what he said in his word. If you abide in me, he said, now abide in you. He said, you'll be able to ask what you will. And this is what John is saying. John is saying that life is in Jesus. I'm just plainly trying to tell you that life is only in Jesus. I don't care what, what you get. I don't care where you go. I don't care what you obtain. Can I tell you, it's only temporary, but when my life is in Jesus, then that's where, that's where I'm going to find my, my, my purpose. Let me, let me get this second thing, because y'all, y'all ain't like that. All right, let me get a second. This, this, this year, let me make another bold declaration. This year, <laughs> I must be willing to break bad habits and create and maintain good habits. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to kick some crutches today. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kicking mine zone. I don't know if you're going to let me kick yours and yours and I'm going to kick mine zone. Uh, but <laughs> in order for me to do this, this year I must be willing to break bad habits and create and maintain good habits. I, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. Look at St. John chapter 5 verse 1. Y'all don't mind us just walking through this? Let's just walk through this real quick. St. John chapter 5 verse number, verse number 1 says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Somebody say up. He went, he went up to Jerusalem. I've taught you in previous lessons that any time somebody was headed to Jerusalem, they always was going up. They're always going up, uh, really in a natural sense, because Jerusalem, where it sat, it was up on a pinnacle. <clears throat> 
and you had to travel up. This is where we have those songs of ascent that we talked about when the pilgrims from all over will be heading to Jerusalem those three times a year. They'll be singing these songs of ascent because they're headed to Jerusalem. They're going to the place. And here the Bible says that there was a feast going on and Jesus was going up to Jerusalem. Now we don't know what we don't know how long this time is from chapter 4 to chapter 5. The, the scripture just says after this. It just says it's just a, a, a a passing of time. Some time has transpired. But look at what we see Jesus doing. We see Jesus, even though he is the son of God, we see Jesus being a good Jew. What, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean, I mean that it was, it was required by God, Yahweh, the one and true only God, that the, that the men, that the Jews would be able to acknowledge and to be able to participate in certain feasts. And here we see, gee, we don't know what feast he's participating in, but we see that it's a feast time. And because it's a feast, that prompt Jesus to do what it is that he needs to do. It could have been, it could have been the Passover, could have been the Feast of Tabernacles, could have been Pentecost. We don't know. But look what the scripture said. The scripture said in Deuteronomy 16, they saying it says three times a year just saluted this three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose at the feast of the unleavened bread the feast of weeks the feast of booths they shall not appear before the Lord empty handed look, look, look at this this is, the, this is the law God says that three times a year I need you to appear before me at the place that I choose at the place I choose I, I, I'm telling you where I want you to go so, so I just can't go where I want to go I just can't say my season up and say I don't want to do this no more but no, I got to go where God desires for me to go and when I do that I need to go I need to go with expectancy I need to go with something in my hand an offering in my hand to be able to offer the Lord I see Jesus Jesus, this is a cold-blooded principle to me because Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is coming to give his life a ransom for the Lord, for, for you and I, to be able to give it. He's, gonna come, he's coming to spill his blood for you and I. He could have easily said, you know, I'm the Son of God. I'm not going to participate in no, in no feast. I'm the Son of God. I'm not going to go to no Jerusalem. That's what I came here to do. But no, Jesus being our ultimate example shows us that what we need to do, even when there are some things that are, that, that are not necessarily something that that I have to do but there's some things that I'm required to do come on here somebody there, there's some things that God requires of us in the things of God that I need to be able to lean in I got to be able to walk in I got to be able to flow in just because just because I, I don't have the the mandate or just because I I can see a little way I can get around doing something I don't need to get around it I need to be able to say God if this is what you're asking of me then I'm going to do it let me let me keep on going yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Let me see. Luke four sixteen. It'll make it. It'll make it plain. Look at Luke four sixteen. Look what he says. And, and, and he came to Nazareth, being Jesus, where he had been brought up. This is where he was brought up. Jesus was brought up in Nazareth, and, and the Bible says, as was his custom. As was his custom. What, what was Jesus custom? Jesus custom was was to watch the game. On, on, what, what was Jesus custom? Jesus custom was the. Was it was to wash his car? Uh, on, 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 what, was, what was his custom? Was it to was it to um, cut the grass and do yard work? Uh, what, what was his, what was his custom? I'm not sure. Was it was to catch up on his shows? I'm not sure what his what his what his custom was here. But but the, the book tells me the Son of God his custom. Look at this. It, it says his his custom was something very 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 interesting. It was he went to what the synagogue. He went. He went to the synagogue. This was. This was what. This is what his custom was. His custom was to 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 go to the synagogue to be able to go to a place to where he knew that where the people of God were, where they were gathered around the word, where they were worshiping. Here, this is what. This is what his custom was. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and the Bible says he stood up to read. What you trying to tell me, bro, Pastor? I'm trying to tell you that this word custom it simply means an accepted or habitual practice of standing. This is something that's habitual. This is something that he did on the regular. Oh, what are you trying to say? Make it even plain, the pastor. This, this is something that Jesus, this was Jesus' habit. 
Hey, this is what has happened. Yeah, well, this is what this, 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 I, I keep telling that this year I, I, I must be willing to break bad habits and create and maintain good habits. Well, well, let me say this, because if Jesus was in a, in a, in a, in a place to where his custom was to be able to move towards the things of God, even though he's the son of God, wouldn't it be beneficial to you and I to keep you and I out of some bad habits and away from some bad habits to move towards the things of God as well? Wouldn't it be wouldn't it be amazing wouldn't it be something that should be should be uh, re really duly noted that if Jesus would go and participate in the tabernacle go participate in the feast and then he would also head to the house of the Lord as his custom this was his habitual practice he was headed to the house of the Lord to do what it is that he need to do and that's all I'm trying to tell you my friend that you can you can kick a lot of crutches if you would just move towards the things of God you can kick a lot of crutches you can be able to minimize on a lot of bad negative habits if you would just simply move towards what God desires for you to do. Jesus himself being the son of God was faithful in worshiping God the Father. Jesus himself being the son of God was faithful in reading and studying the word of God. Jesus himself was faithful. Now if he was faithful in all of that how much more should you and I. Somebody say it's a habit. It's a habit. It's a habit. So let me, let me tell you what let me tell you what the brother James Clare said. I love, I love what he said. He wrote this book called The Time habits look what he says every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become every action you take is a vote and see a lot of times it, it, I love this because he didn't say every word we say he said every vote, every vote that we, every, every, every action rather, every action that we take is a vote to be the person we wish to become. And here, if we're, if we're in, in the context that we're talking about, we're talking about discovering purpose. We're talking about maximizing on what it is that God desires to do in and through our lives and everyone connected to us. The actions that I'm speaking towards, I'm talking about coming towards the things of God so I can be everything that he desires me to be. And when I make an action, when I, when I say no to some things and say yes to God I'm put I'm casting a vote I'm putting in my ballot that God I'm going to be this man of God this woman of God that you call me to be every time I say no to my flesh and say yes to God I'm ca I'm pa I'm casting a vote saying God I'm going to be everything you desire every time I turn my plate down and I pull God closer I push my plate back and I pull them closer I'm casting a vote and I'm saying God I'm going to be everything you desire for me to be so oftentimes we ask these question how come and why, why is it that I cannot I can't do what it is that I'm desiring to do why is it that I can't lose the weight why is it that I can't put down the bad habits why is it can I can't do this and do that because oftentimes we are we are we are we are doomed before we ever get started oftentimes we self-destruct before we ever get all the way into what it is that we're desiring God to do in and through our lives because listen to me very closely because anything that God desires for us to do, our flesh is against it. I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that. I, I know that's not, I know that's not revelation. You know, I know that ain't, the, 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 I know that ain't the most powerful thing you've ever heard in your life. I know that's like, you know, okay, duh. I know that duh, and all of that. But can I tell you anything that, God, anything for the kingdom of God, for the work of God, anything that God desires for us to be able to do, our flesh is against it, and it goes, it goes against the grain to my human nature. My human nature want to chill. My human nature want to relax. My human nature want to eat and do and do and. Do do everything that I want to do but whatever it is that I that whatever it is that I pursue and whatever it is I go after those are going to be the things that God is going to use to be able to push me to my push me to my to my purpose can, can I tell you I'm trying, trying to do the best I can here today can, let, me, let me remind you of something that your habits are really truly shaped by the systems that you have in your life shaped by your systems your habits are shaped by your system whatever system you have in place and it's really it's really important you don't you don't rise i love what i love what brother said in the atom, atomic habits he said you don't you don't rise listen to me closely you don't rise to the level of your goals you fall to the level of your systems how my life is structure is another word structure system so so let me say it this way if i never spend time talking with god when something really jumps off in my life, if, if uh, whatever it is, I, I, I can't fall to prayer because prayer not there. 
I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't come to him and, and, and expect him. And that's why we be, we be chasing everybody else down and, and trying to say, yeah, I can't, Pastor ain't calling me back. He ain't texting me back. You know? And see, whenever you can't get through, whenever you can't get through to me, come on, you, you ought to be able to get through to him. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what. You ought to be able to get through to him because the point that I'm trying to make is, 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 is my, I can't wait to crisis. I can't wait to negative things. I can't wait when something happens in my life to get me to a place that where now all of a sudden I'm trying to scramble around and trying to trying to conjure up an anointing trying to conjure up a walk with God that's why whenever it is that something hitting my house here if I don't got no word in me I don't got no word to pull on I can't wait to I saw when, I, when anybody ever been going through so bad got so much water in your eye you can't even see your Bible you can't even see the scripture anybody mind ever been so overwhelmed and thoughts all in your mind you can't even understand what you're reading oh but when I can't read it and when I can't find it oh I'll be able to pull up a verse that's downloaded in my heart because I put something in me because I know that God, 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 God he'll never, he'll never leave me nor, nor forsake me it's, it's all about habits my friend I got to learn how to get rid of some bad ones and, and create some new ones I, I love what this brother said and the time of habits look what he said he said how to create a good habit I'm going to help you I don't got time to park here we'll come back and talk about habits another time but let me just give them to you and I'm going to move on how to create a good habit make it obvious put it in the front of your face Make it obvious what you're trying to do. Make it obvious. You 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 can speak a habit, and that'll make you that that that'll, that'll give you some a little bit of accountability when you speak a thing to somebody who's gonna hold you accountable. If you got somebody that you let hold you accountable. Number two, uh, make, make make it attractive. Make it something that you want. I, I'm not gonna get up here and say I'm gonna I'm gonna eat Brussels sprouts six days a week. No, make make it attract. Make it something attractive. Put something and put it put an incentive there. Number three, make it easy. Yeah. We want to conquer the world. All in one single bounce. Come on, it's incremental growth. It's methodical growth. I don't got to try to change everything overnight. And then because I'm going to sit down and read the whole book of Psalms tonight. All 150 of them. And you're going you're gonna to get the Psalms 1. Like, uh, all right, Lord. Lord, know my heart. You know my heart here. Yeah. No, to make it easy. Come on, you got you to gotta do a step by step. Number four, make it satisfying. And what's more satisfying than, than honoring God? What's more satisfying than doing what it is that God has called me to do? Let me, let me get out of here. How to break a bad habit just to reverse. Make it invisible. You trying to get rid of something? Trying to stop doing something that you know you're not supposed to be doing? Get it out your face. Get it off your phone. <laughs> Get it out your cabinets. Get them out your bed. Never mind. Anyway, <laughs> make, gotta, make, gotta, make, gotta make it invisible. That's everybody on in Twitter world. Make, make, make it invisible. Number two, make it unattractive. Make it difficult. You want to save some money? Come on up. Put, put it in, your, in, in an account you don't have a card for. You got to go all the way to the bank. You got to get in line. You gotta, if you want to try to save some money for real, put, make it difficult for you to be able to get it. But as long as it's on your phone, or you can swipe it, no swiping, you're going to keep on swiping. Make, make, it, make it unsatisfying. Let me, let me go because that's not my message. I, I'll come back to habits another time. I promise you I will because I love it because I, I think it, it really will make a difference. But let me give you another thing because here, here th th this year I must be willing to not hang with the hinder. If I'm, if I'm really, really going really to kick the crutch, I must be willing to, to not, not to hang with, with, with the hinder. Not to hang with the hinder. The, 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 here, let, let's, let's, get to the, let's get to the story. Look at John, John, chapter, John chapter 5, verse number 2. Look what it says. Now... There is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roof colonnades or porches, porches there. Here, when we, when, we, when we talk about this Bethesda, this pool of Bethesda, and you all know this, we've, we've talked about this pri um, previously, but this, this Bethesda is very interesting because of not just where it's situated, not just what it is that it, that it has as it relates to the five porches, but the name Bethesda is very powerful. Yes, sir. You see it there on your handout. Bethesda is just simply, what does it say? House of mercy. Yes, it's a house of mercy yeah. uh, or, or house of grace. Uh, also, some say that, that it means place of two outpouring. This, this is powerful. This is the place of Bethesda. This is a house of mercy, house of grace. A name like that, man, you would think that this is a, the buzz. This is the buzz. This is the place to be. This is where it all goes down at Bethesda. This is where this is what, what happens at Bethesda. I'm, a, I'm excited to be a part of Bethesda. I want I'm, I'm everybody, the who's who hangs out at Bethesda. But let, let, let's, see, let's see who's at the house of mercy. Let's see who's at the house of grace. Let's see at the place of two outpouring. Verse 3 tells us the, the inhabitants of Bethesda. In these lay a multitude of invalids. 
blind, lame, and paralyzed. These individuals would congregate at this particular place called Bethesda, this particular pool, and they would, they would, this is literally the place of individuals that, that, are, that are really societal outcasts. These are individuals, invalids is what John says, English standard, let me define invalid, it is simply to suffer a debilitating illness, to be sick. Or be sick to experience some personal incapacity or limitation. To, to simply put, be weak. This is a place, a gathering of weak people. This is a place of, of people that are debilitated. This is a place of people who can't function properly. This is a place full of individuals who are not able to go the way they're supposed to go and do what it is that, that they were created to do because of an illness in their body. They had some physical ailments. These is where the blind were. They, the blind could not do what? They can't see. The lame, the lame, the lame can't do what? They can't, they can't walk. Those that are withered and deformed, they're paralyzed and they're literally just lying there and they're just there but this is supposed to be a house of grace this will be a house of mercy this will be a place of outpouring and here can I tell you that here if I'm going to be able to kick the crutch I can't I can't just go hang with everybody else who is hurting like I'm hurting that's all that's all I'm trying to say. we see um, the Bible says multitude mo multitude let me let me try to help you here a little bit here because God, God, I tell you that that many theologians suggest that at a normal time normal time there'll be a couple of hundred people just hanging there but now it's a time of feast they say it's thousands of people. Can you imagine? Can you imagine thousands of individuals that are that are that are debilitated, that are sick? Can you imagine thousands of individuals who are weak and they're trying to go? Everybody needs some help. Everybody need a hand up. Everybody need a hand out. Everybody needs something. Can you imagine the scene here at the house of hope? Can you imagine the scene at this house of mercy? These are the bunch of individuals that can't help themselves. But what am I trying to tell you, my friend? If you're going through an season of your life the, 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 the worst thing that you can do is go hang out with folk that got the same issue you got if you need to be delivered the worst thing you can do is go find somebody that's living the same way doing the same thing can I tell you that two weak people make one wicked person y'all gonna help me out. if I, I don't need to put you in my life and you make it convenient for me to mess up y'all gonna help that, that, we like we like being around folk that make it convenient hey, all right all right child I ain't judging you you go ahead Everybody cuss a little bit. Everybody drink a little bit. Everybody smoke a little bit. Everybody get their roll on. Everybody get their roll. Y'all don't know about that. 7 p.m. I know what I'm talking about. And say, hey, everybody get their roll on. Can I tell you here? We, we like to hang out with people who make us feel okay with our mess. Mm, but God is not calling us for that. God is calling us. If, if I'm going to kick the crutch, I can't hang out with the hinder. You hurting like me. Why, why do we take marital advice from divorced people? Why, why am I taking financial tips from you when you hide in your car around the corner? I'm just trying to figure out why am I doing that. Why, 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 would, I, why, wouldn't, why, why would I get spiritual insight from somebody who haven't strung together six months together and being successful in the things of God? But you, you want to come talk to somebody that's mature in the area because you know they're going to do what? kick your crutch <laughs> you, you know you know but we like we like hanging around people that's like you know what all that got a little something going on all that got a little, no 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 I, the worst thing i need to do is go find somebody that's doing worse than me or in the same condition as me and just go hang with them let me get let me get out of here 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 let's go Tonight they're gonna be they're gonna be flipping tonight. I promise. Somebody gonna do a somebody gonna do a cartwheel right down. I can see I see right there. God, God is called God is calling us to be whole. Somebody say whole. Ho holistic living. Hear me talk about it all the time. Holistic living is char characterized by the belief that the parts of something are explicable or explainable only by reference to the whole. Break it down, Pastor. Uh, all right, I will. <laughs> Can I tell you that? Holistic, holistic. I, I, I can't, I, when I look at my life as a whole, I can't be, I don't, want, I don't desire you to be a, a, a good father and a horrible, and a horrible husband. Right. I, I don't want to be a good pastor or a good preacher and then I'm a horrible Christian. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, you know that's there. I, you know, these people preach real good. They can do say it, doc, and he can do all that stuff. But then I don't live nothing I'm saying. I don't want to. But no, holistic speaks to not just, you can't just, you just can't dissect my life and break my life off in incremental parts. But whole means that, that, that you got to, you see me based off the whole. Let, let me try it another way. Holistic it also means medicine treating the whole person. Remember we did this whole series about necessary adjustment. Here we, the whole person, rather than just, rather than just treating the symptoms of a disease we, we treat the whole and that's why all I'm saying when it comes to holistic living God desires all of our lives to be mature and to be complete in every area and God is calling for us I can't I can't, I can't hang out with the weak trying to be whole is all I'm trying to say I can't be hanging out with folk that's that's striving just half the way and expect God to, to make me whole all right let me keep on going I'm just making declarations I'm just making let me say next, next one here let me get out of here this this year I will be I will be, look at this, I will not, this year, I will not be crippled by not being aware. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm, I'm making a declaration. I won't, I won't be, I won't be, I won't be crippled by not being aware. Not, not this year, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to kick the crutch. Let, let, let's, let's see, because I believe it's something that God, God wants to say something to us, and it's, it's really, it's really key, and I think this verse of scripture is going to um, really elaborate it all. God is going to really expound it all. I want everybody to look up and hear uh, on the screen here because we want to read this together. It's not on your, it's not on your notes, just the scripture references there. Come on, we're going we're to read this together. John chapter 5, verse number 4. Let's read together. Come on, ready to read. Y'all see a verse? Okay, all right. So let's try it again. John chapter 5, uh, verse number 4. Come on, ready to read. It's not, it's not there. It's not there. Hmm. Hmm. It's not. It's not there. It's not there. That's, that's, that's not. A, that's not a glitch on media, by the way. No, it's. It's. It's, it's not there. It's not there. What. 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 Are you, what. Are you, what. Are you, what. Are you, what. Are you saying, Pastor? Because, in. In the. In the original. In the original. In the original. We. We. This is the benefit of. 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 Of having the Word of God. Uh, you know, we, we don't have just, we just don't have man's book or this is not the white man religion that people be telling us and they just gave us this book to make us slaves and all this kind of stuff. No, we, we, have, we have some manuscripts that date all the way back to the first century. Some manuscripts, late first century, early second century, some manuscripts, copies, copies of where individuals, that this was the day and time. Now, when we copy something, we can't, we can't play the telephone game real good. Miss Stella can't say something to, to her and it hurt and it, it'll be messed up back there. But in their day, and preserving the text, oral tradition was, a, was, was top priority. And preserving the word of God, the, the, you have copies and copies and copies. So here, when you, you have a King James Version and King James Version, I'm just trying to teach you something. That's why I use some more of the modern translations in here. Not just trying to be cute, but it's, it's the reason why I do this. And look, look at, look at Ch um, um, John chapter 5, verse number 3 in the King James. Look at the King James Version. King James, 1611, King James. It says, in, in these, look at this, in these pools and under these porches lay great multitude of impotent folk, of, 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 of blind, hot, withered, waiting for the move. They were waiting for the moving of the water. So we're trying to figure out why all these folk are there. They're there because they're waiting on the moving of the water. Look at the next verse. Verse number four, King James says, for an angel went down. Y'all remember this? For an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and did what? Trouble the water. Whoever, whoever the first, whoever, whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in and was made whole and whatsoever disease he had, whatever disease he had will be, will be made healed or maybe they'll be made whole. So here, this is, this is how, this is how, this is how if, if we were it's just studying on the surface, but this is why we need places like school of ministry. School of ministry kind of teaches you stuff like this, not just to read on the surface and just take things at face value. But here, when you when you when you read this, we're trying to figure out well, why are all these lame people there, why are all these sick folk here. Here, this this manuscript says that because they was waiting on the angel to come down, they touched the water, the trouble the water. And see now, what the, the point is, I'm, I'm getting that you got to follow me. We're thinking people now, you got to think with me because when we when we when we discover some earlier manuscripts. We see in the earlier manuscripts that are, when I say early, I mean closer to the time of the original writers. When we discover that, <clears throat> that verse wasn't in there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to tell you that the, the word of God, nothing wrong with the word of God. I'm trying to tell you that the King James, the editors that, that kind of was copying the, the verses, added this verse in along with other ones. And we'll be fine. That's why I need to, that's why I need to pass the pastor. And there's ain't nobody to rock, rock your world with this. And I'm just trying to help you out here. The point, the point I'm trying to make is that a, a scribe somewhere, an editor somewhere, while they was copying and transferring the word of God, somebody brought this in or edited this in so we can be able to kind of understand why all the impotent people was there. 
So somebody was trying to help our understanding by saying that here, this is what these people were there. They were there because this was like something like a, a superstition that they had. That it was around this particular pool, <clears throat> this particular pool, every now and then, some kind of way would get, as they were called it, get trouble. Being trouble, it just simply, we, we, we really believe that it was, it had some type of, it was a, it was a, I can't think of the name of right now, with the, with the bubbles, with the bubbles, what is they called, what they call those things, the bubbles, say it again. No, no, like, a, like a, I don't know what y'all, I can't hear y'all anyway. Anyway, yeah, so, so that's, that's like, a, like a spa almost with bubbles. I, I, can't, I can't hear y'all. Y'all got to talk to these outside boys. What did y'all say? Like a hot spring. Exactly what the word I'm looking for, hot spring. That term I'm looking for. It's like a hot spring. And so, you know, when you get in some hot water, you get in a little jacuzzi, and you got to get an E, ooh, ah, ah, you got a little ache and pain, and you go get in the jacuzzi, and what you do? Well, you feel better. You feel better. And so this is what they believe. It's like some hot springs that every now and then the waters will bubble up and bubble up, and people who weren't feeling good, they'll jump, jump in the hot spring, and they'll feel better. This was a superstition of that day. What you trying to say, bro, Pastor? I'm trying to say I thank God for not only just the early manuscripts like English Standard Version and all that kind of stuff, early manuscripts that, that, that kind of kind of, kind of, kind of uh, clears this up for us so there's no contradictions in God's word because somebody who's an egghead to say, they ain't even in your Bible, and you're sitting there believing that, but no, no, I understand this early manuscript. But I, I'm grateful for that because here you got people believing things in their day. Put the verse back up. You got people in their day believing in some superstition. The point I'm trying to make is, this, this reminds me of so many people in 2022, where individuals are always around the things of God, but they want something else to happen for them to be able to be whole or healed. Let me, let me say it again. Break it down a little further. Man, I shouldn't have swung this hard first Thursday of the year. Let me try again. I should say this for school to minister or something. Man, good. Let, me, let me try this again. And so, so the point I'm trying to make is, is that these individuals, and, and much like you and I, we, we, we can't take what God has said at face value oftentimes. We need something else. We, we, need, we need somebody to call our name out specifically. Call out my last three digits of my card. I, I need somebody to, I need, I need, well, Lord, if it's really you, let them have on a blue shirt. Well, God, if it's you, let the shade be Carolina blue. And Lord, if it's this, let it this happen. Let we be fleecing God and doing all this stuff. But here, what, what am I telling you? That whenever it is that you and I are walking with God and following God, we cannot be superstitious. What, what is superstitious? Superstitious is a belief or a practice resulting from ignorance, fear of the unknown, trust in magic or chance or a false conception of, of caution. And in other words, here, what did I tell you? And this year, I'm going, if I'm going to kick this habit, I can't be crippled by being ignorant or being unaware. So I need to know what God's words say. I don't need, I don't need, I don't need grandma theology is all pastors trying to say because we accept a whole lot of things as if God is speaking it to us and it's just, it's just a matter of somebody's opinion. And if I'm, going to, if I'm going to kick the habit, if I'm going to be who it is that God has called me to be, I can't take folk opinion. I can't take what you think, how you feel about the situation, but I need God's word, and I need to take God's word at face value if, if it's going to have some effect and some, some, some help in my life. Look at, look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 14 says, look what, look what Paul says. This is why it's so important. Stand therefore, having fastened on the, lie, the belt of lies. <clears throat> we, 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 rather, we rather believe a lie if it's going to make us feel better. Amen. We, we, rather, we, rather, we, we rather, this is why, this, I can't use that illustration. We rather, we rather believe a lie. This is why a brother, brother will go out in the street. That's why a brother will go to the club. That's why a brother will go somewhere and spend his money just for somebody to say, say, say he handsome when he know he ugly. Because he wants somebody to tell him something good. Amen. We rather believe a lie then to hold on to the truth. And the point the pastor trying to make is not trying to tell you that there's the contradiction. Yeah, some of y'all still stuck on that King James and ain't an original. They added it in there and all that kind of stuff. Y'all just, trust me, I would not bring nothing up like that and it wouldn't help you out here. The point I'm trying to make is, is that we need to know the truth of God's word and know what it is that God is saying concerning us. And when we know the truth of God's word, no matter what everybody else is doing or saying, I'm going to hang on to the truth. I'm going to hang on to God's word. I'm going to be who it is that God does desires for me to be. Let me, let me get out of here. 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 I'll do better next time. Look here. It said that this year, I will, I will not be crippled by being comfortable in dysfunction. I can't, I can't be comfortable in dysfunction. Look, John 5, 5 says, one man was there 
who had been an invalid for how long? 38 years. He'd been there for 38 years. Dysfunction. His brother was, was, was comfortable. He had been there for 38 years. For, for 38 years. He was there. He was this at the, at the, at the, he wasn't there for 38 years, but he was in his condition for 38 years. We don't know how long he was there at the pool. He was at the pool waiting on something to happen, waiting on something to jump off is what he was there. But here, can I tell you that I can't be comfortable comfortable in dysfunction. What's dysfunction? Dysfunction is not operating normally or properly. Unable to deal with adequately with, with, with normal social relations. Dysfunction. We'll say dysfunctional family. Dysfunctional marriage. Dysfunction. We'll say it's some dysfunction. And the, the problem comes in whenever it is that you have individuals who are, who, are, who are dead set against not growing. Dead set against not being who it is that God desires for them to be. We're going to be comfortable in our dysfunction. I don't know about you. Do you know any, anybody like this? I know people who they're not okay unless they're mad about something. Amen. I, I, I don't know if you know anybody like that. I, I, I know some folk that, 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 that things, things can be going okay, but they got to pick a fight. They got to start an argument. They, some, something got to jump off for them to feel good about themselves. That, that's somebody that's dysfunctional. And here, I, I, cannot, I, cannot, I cannot be comfortable in my dysfunction, glossing over, covering up, saying, oh, that's just how I am. Oh, I'm just real. Yeah, you're real rude. No, that's what, that's what you are. Remember, you're real, real rude. No, I can't be comfortable. I need to be functioning, not in a dysfunctional way, but in a functional way is what God has called me to be. And look what Jesus said. John, John 5 and 6 says, when Jesus saw him laying there, uh, he had got comfortable in his dysfunction. How do you know he got comfortable, Pastor? Because the Bible says, the Bible says that when Jesus saw him laying there, I'm so glad that Jesus sees us. When he saw, us, saw him laying there, he had already been there a long time. So you just been there. You just, so you just here just waiting. So you just here. You just, you just, you just. So, so how long are you going to lay here, bro, is what I need to ask him. How long are you going to sit where you are. Well, how long are you going to lay in this condition? How long are you just going to allow life to pass you by? How long are you just going to allow seasons to pass? Come on, how long are you going to go from 2019 to 2020 to 2021? And now we're in 2022 and we're still making the same excuses for our dysfunction. How long will you keep on circling around the same mountain? How long will you keep on going through the same thing over and over and over again but expecting different results? That's called insanity, my friend. How long, bro, are you just going to sit there and you're going to wait on your deliverance based off what somebody does for you? Amen. How long? I, I, love, I, love what, I love what the Lord told Saul, Saul, Saul when it comes out, Solomon, when he told Samuel, rather, as it relates to Saul. Y'all cut the fans off. Look what he says when it comes down, when it comes down to what the Lord said to, to, to Samuel concerning Saul. First, first Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, it said, the Lord said to Samuel, Samuel, how long will you grieve over Saul? How long will you grieve over him since I have rejected him from being king over Israel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How long will you, and that's a question I'm just trying to ask you. I'm trying to ask you, how long are you going to keep crying over spilled milk? Yes, how long are you going to keep on complaining? How long are you going to blame where you are on your parent? Blame where you are because somebody took your money and didn't pay you back. How long are you going to keep on grieving over the same thing over and over again, year after year after year? I'm not telling you that we don't hurt and we don't grieve. I'm not telling you stuff that don't rip your heart out. I'm not telling you there's not things that make you cry and not the wind out of you. I'm not saying I'm not insensitive in that way. But the point I'm trying to make is, is that God will give you and I the ability not just to be able to deal with what's going on, but God to let us be able to create an atmosphere that where we can cut the cycle we can be able to break the cycle we don't got to keep on going through this for 38 years no we don't this clock, this clock is ticking over and over again this brother's just laying there I want to ask you how many New Year's you got to bring in? How many watch night services you've been to? How many times have you? How many times you read your Bible in one year? How many times you say I'm a, 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 I'm a for 38 years? This brother laying here. So some of us get stuck in a term I've, I've given you before called learned helplessness. Learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is one, one who has been conditioned to expect pain. This brother laying here so long, he don't look to get up. <laughs> learned helplessness is you're not even looking for nothing to change. You're not even looking. You say you 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 you, you singing a song. We we sing we singing a song talking about I'm I'm reaping the harvest. God, you're not looking for no harvest. 
You're not looking for no turnaround. You're not looking for God to bless you that way. You're not looking. Hey, hey, we get to the place where we, we're conditioned for pain and conditioned for suffering, conditioned for discomfort. Without, and, we, and we feel like in our heart of heart that there's no way out. But the devil is a liar. No on here. Oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be helpless all my walk with God. No, I'm going to get. Oh, I'm going to be everything that God desires for me to be. I'm going to be an overcomer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to obtain what God has for me. I'm going to reap what God has promised me. I'm going to take back what the devil has stole from me. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not just going to lay there and let life pass me by. No, I'm not. I'm going to kick the crutch. This, this is supposed to be a house of mercy, but the house of mercy will become a house of misery when I live in mediocrity. It's supposed to be a house of mercy. This is supposed to be a house of mercy, but my house of mercy will turn into a place of misery when I live in mediocrity. <laughs> let, me, let me let y'all out of here. here look, what, look, what, look, what, look what happens here because if I'm going to kick the crutch, I got to, I got to, be, able to, I got to be able to answer some, some crucial questions. <clears throat> Look at, look at, let me speed up here. John 5, 6, look what it says. When Jesus noticed him lying there, how was he lying there? He was lying there helpless. Learn helplessness, I just told you. Helpless. Knowing that he had already been there a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you want to become well? That's what I want to ask you. Do you really want to kick the crutch? Or are you just saying what you're supposed to say? Do you really want to be whole? Do you want to be nothing missing, nothing broken? Are you really in earnest about getting well? Do you really desire to be whole, to be healed is what Jesus is asking him. Heal is, is to be sound and healthy uh, in mind, body, and soul. Do you really want Jesus asking his brother this question? Jesus was asking a question not for information, but he's trying to drop some revelation. He asked a question and said, where's your husband? He told that woman in John 4. He said, Philip, what are we going to buy some bread? He, he, said, he said, who do men say that I am? He's asking this question. He's trying to spur something in this man because Jesus knows there's more in him that's in him. But you got to kick that crutch. Let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go. Some, sometimes because we are helpless and just lying there, we can be 20-year-old Christians, 22-year-old Christians. Instead of us being 22-year-old Christians, we're one-year Christians 22 times. Walking with God for 50 years. Instead of me being a 50-year-old Christian, <clears throat> I'm a one-year Christian 50 times. No maturity. Still talking about people. Still lying. Still being messy. Just got to say this and got to say that. Let me get out of here. Hello? Hello. Yeah, I'm here preaching the word. Yeah, okay. Let me get out, let me get up, let me get up out of here. There's some crucial questions I got to ask. There's some crucial questions. Let me ask these questions here. Let me get up out of here. I got to leave y'all alone. Let me get up out of here. Y'all ain't going to show up next noonday. I'm going to shut down noonday too. Let me get, look at this. I, I'm, am I ignoring the emotions? Am I, am I ignoring my emotions of anger, sadness, and fear? I got to ask some crucial I got to ask some questions. Am I ignoring my emotions? God don't want me to ignore my emotions. He want me to deal with my emotions. He don't want my emotions controlling me. Am I, I skipped one. Am I, am I, am I give me the first one because I skipped it. Am I using God to run from God? What does that mean? That means you, you serve, 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 serve so you never got to sit down and be able to hear the word. You serve, serve, serve. You do, 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 do because you don't want to spend an intimate time with God. You can't use God to run from God. Ask some crucial questions. Am I, am I, look at this. Am I dying to the wrong things? Am I dying in my, my commitment, my favor, my push for my zeal? And am I, am I dying in those things? But while all along, all the things that I like to do are, are alive and well. Am I, denying, am I denying the past, the past impact on my present? Just some questions. I'm a, I don't got time to unpack any of these. So let me, let me just, y'all just read them in on your paper. We'll, we'll do these another time. I may, I may just pick up on this. I may just pick up. Let me see where I'm at. Let me see where I'm at. Let me see where I'm at. Instead of trying to, trying to, trying to, trying to finish it up. Mm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to get this to you. So let me just get this to you. John 5, 7. Look what it says. It says, the sick man answered him, <clears throat> sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. So there, this, is, this, is, this, here, this is English standard. So this is letting us know this was the thought of the day. The thought of the day, they're here because they're they looking for the, the pool to be stirred up. This is a thought. He, he won't, he, nobody put me in. I'm not whole. He didn't even answer Jesus' question. Jesus said, do you want to be whole? He said, I can't be whole because nobody don't pick me up and put me in. 
Look, did you see that? Jesus said, do you want to be better? Do you really want to be better? And he pointed the finger. He went that way. They did this. They did that. I wonder how many of us did the same thing. They played it. Come on, help me sideline, preacher. Play the, play the blame game. We blame, he, blame, he blame his deliverance on what somebody else does. Look what Craig Rochelle says. Apathy finds an excuse while passion finds a way. I can find an excuse, but I need to be able to find, I need to be able to find a way. Look what Jesus said. So this year I will not be crippled by not obeying his word. I'm going to obey God's word. What, what did Jesus say? Look at John 5 and 8. Jesus said to him, get up, take up your bed and walk. He, he commanded, he told him three things to do. He said, get up. Somebody said, get up. get up. He told him to get up. He told him to take up your bed and walk. All the definitions are there for what Jesus was saying to him. Verse 9 says, and at once the man was healed, yes. took up his bed and walked. And now that day was the Sabbath. Verse 10 says, so the Jews said to the man, who has, who, 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 he said, the Bible says the man, who, the, the, the Jews said to the man who had been healed, he said, it is the Sabbath and, and is it not lawful for you to take up your bed? Why are you carrying your bed? They're not concerned about this brother <laughs> being healed. They were so concerned about this brother picking up a bed. That's what, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm wrap it up right there because I want to I want to I want to I want to just jump. I want to just skip because I want to skip all the rest of it. I want to I want to unpack all this. I'm going to unpack all this next time. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some prayer. Let me just stop. I was just going. I was just going to blitz through the rest of it. I'm just going. I'm just going to stop. I'll pick up right here. We'll we'll pick up on um, kick the crutch part two is what we'll do. Be the Lord's will. Be the Lord's will next week. Come on, one more time. Put your hands together. Give some prayer. Because I need to. I need to. I need, I need to come back and I'm going to ask all these questions. We need to deal with these questions and, and deal with all that instead of just skipping all past all that. So, so, Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is rich. Your word is blessed. Your word is so powerful and we're so thankful for it. Thank you for uh, this first message of a brand new year, God. You, you desire for us just to simply to do better. You just desire for us, God, to step up and step out and be who it is that you so have called us to be. And we're so thankful for another opportunity. God, to be able to level up in every area of our life. We've marked this year as our year of elevation. If that's going to be the case, God, we got to kick some crutches. We got to do better in some areas. We got to do what it is you so called us to do. And we ask you to help us all. <laughs> and we ask you to assist us all so we can be the people that you designed for us to be. And we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Come on, put your hands together. Give them some praise. <clears throat> Some glory and some and some honor and some honor. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm just gonna stop there. I, I was gonna blitz through the rest of it, but that, that's, that's a really the, the rest of it is really good. It, it just kind of gives us it, what you think is going to happen is not what's going to happen. So that's why I wanna I wanna come back. I wanna come back and I wanna I wanna deal with that. Be the Lord will next week. Next week. All right, I'm open up the floor, of course. Got any questions? Any comments? Any concerns? Yes, ma'am. Talk to Mr. Sister Tyler. Happy New Year. Yes, ma'am. Right, yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Amen. Yes, ma'am. Right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. That's, <clears throat> no, I got you. You got to have some. You, you can't. If you don't have any skin in the game, you don't have anything to pull from. You don't have anything to stand on when, when trouble comes, when trials come. So you're exactly right. I, I, yes, ma'am. I understand 100%. Come on, put your hands together for that. I appreciate you, Sister Tyler. We appreciate you. Amen. Thank God for you. That's right. All right. Next up, anybody up? Anybody? They looking like? Of course. But of course. Yes, ma'am. Come on. I let Sister Tyler slide now because her knee may be bothering or something. So everybody else coming to this mic. We're going to let her slide. Yeah, bump, bump us up a little bit. Bump us up a little bit. Come on. Come uh, on. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I haven't seen you. Yes, yes I have. Okay, I have. Well, I haven't seen you since last year, Thursday. Yes, ma'am. Happy New Year. I just want to say I thank you for the new series, A Fresh Start and Kicking the Crutch. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just going to speak, I have crutches, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, this series, I pray that will help me kick the crutch because, like you said, we come com- become complacent because it's so comfortable mm-hmm. with the crutch. <clears throat> and then in the medical world, that's what we want to do. We got to get those crutches from under you so you can walk. Come on, talk to me, Doogie Howser. Come on, help me out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to and, and say that I want to learn how to, to walk without the crutches. The crutches that will keep me from having term life. And that's what those crutches uh, are doing to us. They're preventing us from doing what it is, our purpose in life, mm-hmm. and getting where God wants us to be, becoming better disciples. Right. And with the crutches moved, I, I am sure that I can become a better disciple. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. Amen. Amen. So, so you mean to tell me if I have a procedure, if I have surgery, they, they, they're not just going to let me lay in the bed? I just can't lay in the bed? No, you, I, can't be, you can't be there for 38 years. I can't. 38 years. <laughs> so, you mean, so I'm, I'm hurt, though, but y'all cut me. I've had an operation. I just can't lay in the bed and recover. That's for your pain pill person. Because we're going to make you get up. going to make me get up. So I got to get up. Gotta, so my knee is bad. I got to get up and move my knee. Got a hip replacement. I gotta, I gotta, you got to move. Physical therapy, huh? Physical therapy. Okay, all right. Come in the we pulpit started. near you. Come in the pulpit <laughs> near you. I got you. I got you. Hey, that's man. That's good. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Sister Linda, come on. <clears throat> appreciate you, Miss Stella. Amen. Dr. Quinn, medicine woman. <laughs> Crucial. It's just real difficult, difficult questions. It's, um, crucial means they mean that not necessarily difficult, but um, but very important, very important. So crucial can be very important, very pointed, very direct, very direct, okay. very direct. Mm-hmm. And I like the way you say the blame on the blame game. Mm-hmm. You can't mm-hmm. blame. <laughs> you can't blame nobody for what you're going through, but that's right. but yourself. And you gotta yes, ask the Lord for your help. Amen. That's right. Yes, ma'am. That's right. All right. Amen. 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 Appreciate you, Miss Miss Brookings. Miss Brookings. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right. We got Sister Evans. Come on, Sister Evans. Y'all be kicking 7 p.m. to sleep. They don't never say nothing. Y'all, y'all. I be loving it. 7 p.m. to be sitting there looking at me. Talk to me, Miss Evans. <laughs> Thank the Lord for this. Yes, ma'am. When you're talking about prayer, if, if I didn't have an open communication with God, I don't know where I would be. Yes, ma'am. My son called me last night, not the one that recently got saved, but mm-hmm. my other son. Yes, ma'am. went through sickness. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was just having a nosebleed, mm-hmm. clots of blood. Mm-hmm. So his friend, she was there, and she said, I'm going to take him to the hospital. I said, no. Mm-hmm. We're going to pray. Yes, ma'am. And I prayed with my son on the phone. Told him to sit up. Just kind of tilt his head forward. Mm-hmm. Not go to sleep. Right. And I was going to check back with him. When I did, it had stopped. Yes, ma'am. Until about 2.30 in the morning. Jesus. Started again. Mm-hmm. And I started to call you. Yes, ma'am. But I, I know when I can't read to nobody else. Right, yes, ma'am. God is always on the scene. Yes, he is. Yes, yes, ma'am. Amen. God had me to get up. Yes, ma'am. And do my Jericho walk. Amen. That's in the it. house that I do every single day. Yes, ma'am. And I just walk through the house at 2.30 in the morning. Yes, ma'am. Thanking God in advance. Hallelujah. Of yes, ma'am. what he was about to do in my son. And yes, I'm ma'am. And I'm asking God to turn it around. Amen. Hallelujah. Around, yes, ma'am. Turn it around. Yes, ma'am. The Amen. sickness wasn't enough before to bring him to Jesus. <coughs> right. He just yes, had ma'am. a temporary testimony. Yes, ma'am. But I want God to do a mighty, mighty word. Amen. Because my prayers are not just dropping to the ground. No, they're not. And I know my tears are not just dropping to the ground. Amen. I want to see my family saved. Amen. And yes, I ma'am. And I up a prayer every day. I Amen. Pray for my family. I pray for my church. Yes, ma'am. I pray for the contacts in my phone. I pray yes, for ma'am. every name on my prayer list. Yes, ma'am. God, no, I come to the throne of grace. Yes, ma'am. Because I know where my help comes from. Yes, ma'am. I thought about you, but yes, I'm ma'am. not too nerdy in the morning. No, I, I got know you. How to the prayer yes, ma'am. I know that's right. Yes, ma'am. Amen. God bless you. 
Amen. That's right, Sister Evan. God is faithful. We're standing in faith with you, too. We're standing in faith with you for the salvation of your family and also um, the healing of your son. We've seen God do it before, and we're looking for him to do it again. We thank God for you. You could have called me, though. You could have called me. <laughs> Talk to me, Sister, Sister Cassandra. We are so dysfunctional. I thought about when you were saying, um, you know, how our dysfunctions are. And, and, and it led me to, you know, because of the new year, uh, we normally cook greens for, mm -hmm. for money and mm -hmm. um, black eyed peas for mm -hmm. luck and all mm -hmm. that stuff right. like that. We got those traditions. Um, but I thought about it. If we would do what the words say mm -hmm. to do, if we bring our monies to the storehouse, mm -hmm. uh, well, our monies will be blessed. We right. wouldn't have to cook green. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. You know, exactly. If we go to the, 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 mm -hmm. the black eyed peas, yes, you know, right. if we pray, yes, if we go to the tree of life, right. yeah, exactly. come on, the, the, the come on. Yes, ma'am. Amen. You know, that's, that's it. Yes, ma'am. Amen. You know, we don't need all that. That's it. We Amen. Back to the word. Exactly. Exactly. That's you, how this you can walk on as many ladders as you want to, walk across as many black cats. Come on, step on in. Don't let the man in your door before the first man. Is that, come on, talk. <laughs> all these superstitions. Oh, come on. Come on, talk to me. That's good. That was good, Mr. Sanders. That was good. That was good. That was good. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's the truth. That's the truth, Sister Tyler. <clears throat> That's the truth. And God uses our serving to take our minds off of us and to be able to flow in what it is he desires to do. And it's something that he releases. When I release something, when I give something, I, it's coming back to me. And, and I think we, we, so kinda, we get kind of stuck and get kind of stingy and get kind of wallowing in our own stuff. But we don't even realize that that's the way that God wants us to do. We got to come out of that. And the only way we can do that, we got to, we got to step out. We got to step out. So very good, very good. All right, Auntie, I was wondering what was going on. Come on, talk to me. Don't be calling me later with your point. Tell me now. Don't call me later. Tell me now. She she call me back with the whole sermon. Come on, talk to me now. <laughs> Yes, he is. So understanding, so gracious to us, to us all. Even though we fall short of the glory of God. Yes, ma'am. But we begin to say, Lord, forgive me. He will forgive you. Yes, he will. When he forgives you, turn your whole life over to yeah. him. Yes, ma'am. Where he can just pull you in his love and everlasting arms. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's right, Auntie. 
That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. We're grateful for another day, another year, another opportunity. So I thank y'all so much for all of your comments, all of your testimonies and all that. I really, really appreciate you. I love you. Come on, let's prepare our hearts and minds to get ready to, uh, to give. We're getting ready to give our offering and give unto the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We're getting ready to give unto the Lord. I'm going to see who I have here. I'm going to see who I have, who I have, who I have. As you're preparing our hearts and minds to be able to give, you ready to give already? Y'all ready to give? All right, well, come on, hold it up on the air. Father, we thank you for every gift and every giver. We thank you, God, because you give seed to the sower. We thank you, God, because we get to give and we get to serve. We ask you, God, to bless us as it leaves our hand, leaves our account. We pray, God, that it'll, it, we know this never going to leave our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's give, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna read some announcements, and we're going to be dismissed. <clears throat> thank you for your commitment, faithfulness to giving. All right, see Miss Brooks, see Miss Janice. Bless you, Miss Janice, Nicole, Bree. All right, praise God. Awesome message. Hey, Miss Vaughn, we miss you, Miss Vaughn, and we praying with you. We praying with you, Miss Vaughn. Miss you. She had a little procedure. We praying for Miss Vaughn. I'm sure we got it on the YouTube. I'm gonna read these announcements, and then we gonna I'm gonna be like Pharaoh and let God's people go. Brother Pompey here and got his hat in his hand. His jacket is on. His sneakers are in place. It's time to go, Brother Pompey. I, I, I know I can. I don't even need a clock. I just can go watch Brother Pompey, and I know what time. I know what time it is. I know what time it is. He is so prompt. <laughs> I'm just trying to holler at my folk real quick. Whit Fever Lit. What's up, Whit Fever Lit? Terry Jones. Bless you, Dula Green. All right, Terry Finn. Announcements. We're gonna have. We, of course, we have a um, prayer tonight at six before um, our. Our worship experience tonight at 7. So we, y'all been enjoying prayer? Y'all been jumping on? Y'all been watching? Amen. Let's not get weary and well-doing. Let's keep, if you can't make it out, just get on the call. Monday through Friday, we're doing the call. Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, a.m., 6 a.m. on the call. And uh, 6 p.m. here at the House of the Lord if you, and, and on all of our social sites. We're going to have an on-campus clothes giveaway this Saturday from 11 a.m. Uh, to 1 p.m., Join us as we connect our church community. We thank God for all of our outreach efforts. Session two of our connection class is going to be um, this Sunday at 830. Um, if you are in ministry, if you serve in ministry in any capacity, we have been um, what we generally have every year, a, a core called the core gathering, core meeting. That's going to be this Sunday at 2 p.m. via the Zoom. Uh, all of the, uh, because of, of course, of what we're going in, we used to pack it in and everybody would come and all that. I don't know if y'all remember those gatherings or not, but all of us would come who serve. Uh, but we're just going to have the ministry leaders, ministry spearheads to be here in person and everybody else going to be on the Zoom. And so I want you to get on the Zoom and it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. All right, I'm going to cast some vision, talk about where we're going and it's going to be good. All right. Uh, if you are interested in learning how to study the Bible, um, capital B, uh, study the Bible, uh, minister, uh, or how what it takes to be a minister of the gospel. We want you to, to, to get involved in our school of ministry classes. They just kicked off on, on last night was our first class. So see, the last um, how we can be able to sign up for that. All right, those are all the announcements. I thank God for all of you. Everybody who's watching online, make sure you share this with somebody. If you are free tonight, make your way out 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to be here 6 p.m. prayer, 7 p.m. Come on, rest on your feet. We're getting ready to dis. I'm going to pray you out. Uh, Father, we thank you for everything our eyes have seen. Thank you for what our ears have heard. Thank you for individuals that have made their way to the house of the Lord. Thank you for the prayer and thank you for the praise and worship. Thank you for your word, God, that gives us life and light, teaching us, reminding us, God, how to kick the crutch. I pray, God, as we leave this place or as we log off, I pray, God, that you'll bless us the remainder of our day. I pray the rest of our day be full of purpose and power and anointing in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that you'll heal Sister Evan's son, God, to stop that nosebleed right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray for her family and all of our families, God, that they will be saved and they will come to know you in the name of Jesus. If you've done it for one, God, you're able to do it for all. And God, we thank you, God, for all that you're going to do. Until we come again, we pray to keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger, all incidents and accidents. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Love y'all. Here come to church. Peace On out. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
you do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry. We ought to clothe the naked and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L Jacks, one word, T-I-L Jacks to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jacks, download our app, and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity, and we love you, and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.